uh, let's make sure we really understand this. Describe to me, say, at this point, wh what do we have in our beaker? Or what do we have in the experiment? What, what type of substance do we have? Well, I'll get you started. Here we have a bunch of solid ice at maybe, I don't know, negative 10 degrees Celsius. Here we have solid ice at maybe negative 10 degrees Celsius. What do we have here? Now, that would be a good answer if we were here. Okay. But at this point, notice we've just gotten to the beginning of the freezing graph. Since we've just gotten to the very beginning, none of it has actually had a chance to melt yet. So at this point, it's still all solid ice. At this point, it's still all solid ice. And what temperature is it at? Zero degrees. But your answer was right if we just look at this point. At this point, we're in the middle of the melting process. So at this point, some of the original ice has melted and some has not. So at this point, now we have some solid and some liquid. So what would we have? And it's all at zero degrees Celsius. Well, what would we have when we get to this point? Which is? Well, notice this is the end of the melting. Is that when it's all liquid? That's right. This is the beginning of the melting process when we haven't generated any liquid yet. This is the middle of the melting process where it's partly liquid and partly solid. But at this point, this is the end of the melting process. So it must all be solid ice at this point. Oh, I, I keep misspeaking. This is the point where it's all solid. Here it's partially solid and partially liquid. And here it's completely liquefied. That's the reason why from this point on, we start increasing the temperature again. Because now we're in the liquid portion. You can see that from our graph, right? This is the solid region. Well, this point here is at the very edge of the solid region. So here we're still all solid. And this is at the very edge of the liquid region. So it's all liquid. But these points here in the middle are between liquid and solid. So here it's partially liquid and partially solid. Because at these points, um, we've delivered enough heat to melt some of the original solid, but not enough heat to melt all of it yet. So here we would have um, all liquid at zero degrees Celsius. Well, describe to me what would the contents of the experiment be at this point, approximately? Liquid. Yeah, and about what temperature? Um, 50. Yeah, it looks like about 50 degrees, but it would all be liquid. Mm -hmm. What would the contents be at this point? Liquid. What phase and what temperature? That's right. But since we're at the very beginning, we wouldn't have any vapor yet. Well, when you're ready, what phase and what temperature would we have here? Um, temperature 100 degrees, uh, some liquid, some vapor. That's right, because now we're in the middle of vaporizing. We've delivered enough heat to vaporize some of it, but not all of it. All right. And when you're ready, we can describe the phase and the temperature at this point. It's still at 100 degrees. While it was vaporizing, the temperature didn't change. All that was changing was the phase in this region. And approximately, what would we have here? All vapor, um, increasing temperature about Yeah, whatever this temperature is. I don't know, maybe 120 degrees or whatever. OK. So it's important to be able to interpret each of the points in the graph. By the way, this is what's called the heating curve. This is a very important graph, this heating curve. So a very common problem is to ask, how much heat does it take to change your temperature? How much heat does it take to change your temperature? Well, to figure that out, we can use, so we have two different formulas that we can use. One formula that we can use when we're changing temperature, and one temperate formula when we're changing phase. When you're changing temperature, This is the formula that we use. And when we're changing phase, this is the formula that we use. So we'll have to see how to use each of these. All right. Um, 
Remember, remind me, what does Q stand for? Heat. Yeah, and what are the standard units for heat? Sure. Good. Uh, what do you think M stands for? Mass. Yeah, and what are the standard units for mass? Okay. Good. And delta T here, what unit should we use for delta T? Kelvin. Does it matter if we use Kelvin or Celsius here? No, because this is delta T. So here's that thing that I was talking about earlier. Here's an equation with delta T. So now it doesn't matter whether we use Kelvin or Celsius because it would be the same either way. Okay, and C is a constant called the specific heat. C is the specific heat. Every substance has a different specific heat. Every substance has a different specific heat, which tells us how hard it is to warm it up. Every substance has a different specific heat, which tells us how hard it is to warm that up. The harder it is to warm it up, the greater the specific heat is going to be. Uh, that's kind of what the name is telling us. It tells us how much heat does it take to warm up that specific substance. Um, so this is not like a universal gas constant, because uh, there's only one universal gas constant, but every substance has a different C. All right, so let's say that we're taking liquid water at 10 degrees Celsius, and we're adding, uh, let's say we've got three kilograms of water. adding 20,000 joules of heat. And the question is to find the new temperature. So we'll go through this together. All right, the first thing is to put points in our heating curve. It's very important to get in the habit of putting points in the heating curve here. So where are we starting? Well, we're starting at 10 degrees Celsius. So I can call this, say, the initial point. And now, is the temperature going to go up or down? Up, uh, because we're adding heat. So maybe our final point, I don't know exactly where it's going to be, but maybe the final point is like here. All right, and the question is asking us to find this final temperature. What was the original temperature? 10 degrees Celsius. So it's a very important habit in these problems to always label your initial and your final point in the heating curve. Every single heat problem that we do, we should draw the heating curve and draw the initial and the final points. Now, does it look like this is going to be a temperature change problem or a phase change problem? So which equation should we use? Yeah, we're going to use the first equation over here. Uh, let's see. What should we plug in for Q? Yeah, positive or negative because we're adding heat. When you add heat, Q is positive. When you remove heat, Q is negative. I didn't actually say that before, uh, but adding heat, Q is positive. Removing heat, Q is negative. So we're gonna add 20,000. By the way, is joules standard units? Yeah, so we can just add that in. What should I plug in for M? Three. Three, I'm gonna write down the units here. All right, and now we have to get our textbook and look up what the C is for water. So you need to, uh, if you couldn't find this, you could look up specific heat in the index. But I'll just find it for you here. Or if I can find it. Page 265. If you ever lost this, you could just look up specific heat in the index. But here's our table of specific heats on page 265. So let's see if we can find the number that we need.
What are the units on that? By the way, they had another column here that was in calories and grams. Right. So actually, you don't necessarily have to translate into standard units. If the problem had been in calories and grams, you could have used those other values for C. Uh, but here, since we were working with joules and kilograms, we might as well use the left-hand value. 